very active in teaching uh, with the Orthopedic Academy. He's presented multiple times and he's one of the faculty who teaches us in the courses and his presentations are always very well received. So we are very happy and pleased that he accepted the invitation uh, to present tonight. Thank you. So we will just, uh, the session today, I'm just gonna explain how it will run. Uh, there will be a short lecture. Uh, it's very concise lecture and focused on what candidates need to know for the FRCS exam. Following that, there will be a question and answer session when we uh, listen to your questions. Um, if you have any questions, please write them on the chat box or you can uh, talk at the end of the session and directly ask your questions. After that, we will have a short MCQ session when you'll be tested. There will be three MCQ questions asked and we'll ask you all to uh, answer these questions. Uh, following the MCQ, we will have be the final session, which will not be recorded, and it is a Viva session. So we will uh, you have a hot seat Viva question when you'll be asked by members of the faculty, um, a Viva uh, questionnaire for the exam. So if you are interested to take part in the Viva, we please ask you to um, express your interest by either sending me a message or raise your the hand symbol next to your name. So we know you're interested in taking part of the Viva um, um, session. This is very highly recommended. We understand what you need and we understand the stress you are under. So we will um, look after you, uh, but it's very highly recommended that you take part in the, in the uh, Viva session. If you miss this, any part of this presentation um, or anything goes a little bit too quickly for you, don't worry. It's recorded and it will be posted um, on the Orthopedic Academy YouTube channel and Ortho TV as well. So without further ado, I will leave you uh, with Siddharth. But before I do that, uh, can you see my, my uh, presentation? Uh, I think it's just gone off uh, your uh, screen, share screen. I uh, see, okay, one moment. So yeah, here it is. I just wanted to re remind you guys of our courses. So we do um, an orthopedic academy, um, three courses. One is the case-based discussion course, um, which uh, we only have six participants per course. And we spend all day with the participants going through 35 high yield exam specific questions. Um, we test you and we then we give you the right answer at the end of, of how this each question should be answered. And this very, very focused day, um, all day. So if you're interested in taking part of this course, uh, we have one, um, the 30th of October, and we have only one place left on it. And then we have another course on the 11th of December. We also have our basic sciences course. Uh, and next course is on the 20th of November. Uh, all our courses are on Saturdays because we know you guys are very busy um, during the weeks um, with your work. Um, and also we have our FRCS smoke exam course, a very popular course. Uh, we have, um, it's basically just simulating the exam, how it goes. So we have a one on 23rd of October, 4th of December and 22nd of January. So um, I would encourage each one of you, please to visit our website, orthopedicacademy.go.uk. Join our Telegram group, um, you know, follow us on Twitter and YouTube. And if you have any questions, please send us a message. So without further ado, I'll leave you with uh, Siddharth. Hello, everybody. You could uh, please share. Uh, today, topic of discussion is about bone and its metabolism. So let me share uh, my screen. So bone metabolism is a topic for today. There's an emblem of orthopedics. I come from Goa, so I got the coconut tree there in the sea. So bone is a composite connective tissue, having a rigid structure, having cells 
embedded in calcify matrix so coming to back we got cells there and we got matrix which is further divided into two organic and inorganic what are the functions of the bone why the bone is there there, are, there has been time when the animal kingdom lived without a skeleton but bone comes with functions of posture that is to maintenance of uh, erect posture and posture of limbs protection of internal organs for example uh, visceral organs the neural organs propulsion by legs and propulsion by hands hands to use and do the things and legs to walk or run proprioception and production production of uh, red blood cells white cell cells done by the bone marrow so bone biomechanically is a very very uh, good structure and tailored to meet the demands most of the most important function of uh, bone is to really maintain posture and that is the stiffness so bone is biomechanically strong in compression is a bit weaker in tension that is if you pull pull out it will just um, it's less uh, stronger than compression and weakest when you twist the bone it it fractures easily rather than when you put tension or compression so you can see this uh, this is a long bone here femur of a child you can see the physial plates bone derives around 5 to 10% of cardiac output so if you see the bone we got a uh, epiphysis metaphysis and diaphysis so as you all know this is epiphysis where there is a which is separated from metaphysis by the physial plate there is a blood supply which comes to the epiphysis in this um, context it comes from the obturator artery and there is a blood supply separately for diaphysis which has basically two blood supply one comes uh, through the into the medulla called and it's called nutrient artery which divides into two branches ascending and defending and one is periosteal the nutrient artery supplies most part of bone that is two third of the uh, diameter it is a it is a it is a lot of pressure and the flow is from inside out whereas periosteal is a low pressure system which uh, in which the blood flows from outside in so this is uh, the schematic diagram you know that at some point in some bones and some joints the epiphyseal blood vessel can cross the physial plate and it has got implications in the clinical practice i'll come to that later so what are the types of bone bones can be uh, divided as per the as per the shape size like a uh, long bones long short bones flat bones irregular bones but um, if you see Uh, histologically they can be histopathologically can be divided into basically three types one is immature type which you can see in fracture callus or some um, uh, periosteal reaction due to tumors is a mature bone mature bone is divided again into two types so this is a piece of mature bone and you can see uh, some areas there which is uh, medullary some areas which are cortical so usually the corticular bone is uh, a lamellar bone lamellar it has a definite lamina and lamellar structure whereas uh, the cancellous bone in the medulla is trabecular bone that means it has trabecular running across in various directions so to show you in more details you can see this uh, uh, two types of bone schematic you got a uh, the trabecular bone up and the lamella bone down trabecular bone has got trabeculae of bone running in various directions whereas in the lamella bone you got lamella of bone organized in a, a 
organized structure called osteon. I don't have a histology of the immature bone, but uh, I can show you X-ray of a fracture callus which shows immature bone, which is poorly organized and has got a, not so much biomechanical, biomechanical strength as, uh, as like a mature, uh, mature bone. So how does the bone develop? So bone development is a systematic process uh, regulated by various genes. So they say that uh, around uh, six to eight weeks, four to, four to eight weeks, basically uh, the limb bud appears. So the embryo throws off this limb bud, which uh, got various zones. One, the, and the, the brown area, which you can see, yellowish brown area is the, is the mesodum, which is going and it has got topping of uh, apical ridge and it has got a polarizing zone. So what does this basically do is these are regulated by genes. For example, anthroposterior growth is regulated by SHH gene, whereas uh, dorsoventral growth is regulated by WNT gene. Sorry, uh, my apologies. So proximal distal growth is uh, modulated by Hox gene, anthroposterior by SHH gene and dorsoventral by WNT gene. So total number of bones which we have is 206. And this is the way the limb bones are formed. So you got a limb bone which elongates and it takes ectoderm and mesoderm with it, which further differentiates into types of bones and uh, uh, shapes of bones. The limb bud for lower limb actually develops a week or two after the upper limb bud develops. So if you have a look at this diagram, you can see the primitive mesoderm having a primitive mesodermal cells. And during the development of bone, we get some of them get transformed into uh, pre-osteoblasts, which again organize themselves and get converted into osteoblite, which throw off bone and we have the membranous bone formation. Bone can also form another way. In this way, the mesoderm forms a cartilaginous analog with a small primary center of ossification, which later on gets uh, vascularized. Still later on, we get a secondary center of ossification in epiphysis and it gets vascularized. This goes into very many, many stages, but I've just um, grossly mentioned the, the three stages. So you've got a cartilage analog, which gets converted into bone. The primary center of ossification, the ossification which starts before birth, with the exception of distal femur, whereas secondary centers of ossification uh, comes after birth. I don't know how this thing has happened, but uh, probably there's some issue there. So, so when you say the, when we know that endochondral ossification and we got primary and secondary centers of ossification, how does bone further grow from the birth to or um, further? So for that, we have the physial plate or growth plate, which has got various zones. Like uh, if you see growth plate, this is toward the epiphyseal side, whereas this is diaphyseal side. So if you see uh, on the epiphyseal side, we've got an artery which supplies some resting cells which are lying there. The resting cells soon proliferate and because they proliferate so quickly that they sometimes do not completely separate and uh, they have a way, uh, appearance of getting stacked. As they further become grow, the, they go into third zone, which is a zone of hypertrophy in which there is a growth and the chondrocyte become bigger and bigger. And finally it 
ruptures and dies itself and releases all its minerals and matrix into the system which further becomes bone and we on the metaphysical side you can see the already formed bone and there are arteries which form a hair loop which actually increases the circulation there and achieves mineralization or ossification of mineralized matrix so you will ask me how much percentage of growth occurs at each joint so if you see upper limb it 40% of growth occurs at uh, shoulder with elbow it is 20% wrist is again 40% hip proximal femur is just 12% knee is 70% ankle is 18% so if you consider the lower limbs uh, <clears throat> nearly uh, 1.5 cm of growth occurs per year at the knee from the birth to skeletal maturity which is uh, around 12 to 14 years in girls and 14 to 16 years in boys. So coming back to the structure of a um, lamellar bone, we have Haversian system. The basic model or basic unit is called osteon. So if you see this diagram, you can see a cross section. You have some uh, periosteum here having two layers. One is fibrous and another is cellular layer. Cellular layer is very important because it is uh, important to have the breadth of the bone along with the length. So it's important. It give, does give some appositional growth. If you see the inside, you got a Haversian canal, which is a, which is a central canal through which artery and um, vein and nerve flows. It is surrounded by a uh, lamellae which, which are held by osteocytes. And at the end where it, where the lamellae are there, there is cementing occurs through this phase. I think someone is drawing on my picture, but I don't know how we can do. Anyway, so this is the basic unit of the basic unit of a lamella bone. We got um, osteocytes uh, layers uh, arranged in circles, which uh, causes mineralization of matrix. So what are the cells? I told you about the cells. We insert some tiny dots. There are some cells uh, which are important. So if you see at the bone, this is a bone where you can have a um, cortex and medulla. The important cell to know is osteoclast because a lot depends on this. This is a uh, basically derived from uh, radicular anterior cells. It's a multi-nucleated cells which lies in the crevices in the bone and it has got a ruffled border through which the bone absorption occurs. All right. So whenever this uh, cell is activated, it does two things. It releases enzymes, which uh, dissolves the matrix. I told you some time back that a matrix is having two components. One is organic and one is inorganic. So organic component is basically collagen, collagen one and some other proteins. This is degraded by an enzyme called cathepsin, which is a proteolytic enzyme. The second part is uh, minerals. Minerals are in two forms. One is um, hydroxyapatite and second one is brucite. So the second enzyme released by osteoclast called carbonic anhydrase dissolves these uh, minerals and then blood vessels flush them away. So this is a very important cell in the bone turnover. The second cell which is there is called osteoblast. Osteoblast is uh, derived from the meso is derived from mesoderm. It goes to the progenitors and, and osteoblast. Osteoblasts are active cells. 
Why are they active? Is because they are secretory. And what do osteoblasts secrete? Osteoblasts secrete proteins. And the matrix and the protein, the main framework which forms the bone, is is uh, so it's secreted by osteoblast, and uh, so osteoblast becomes a very important um, cell. It undergoes three phases: it un either undergoes apoptosis and dies, or it can convert it into a lining cell, or it get converted into the next cell, which is osteocyte. This is a fairly inactive cell. However, it has got a very important role in maintaining calcium phosph phosphorus hemostasis. So this is the cell which actually mineralizes the inorganic matrix. Sorry, it basically mineralizes the matrix, the collagen matrix, which is uh, secreted by osteoblast. So, as I said earlier, matrix is 70% of minerals which gives constructive, sorry, which gives a compression strength to both and 30% organic, which gives the tensile strength or which uh, avoids uh, or gives a uh, strength against the pull on the bone. So when, when we see the, mat, the, or, the organic component, we got uh, collagen, which is a uh, triple helical structure made up of um, alpha chains. And uh, the crystalline structure made up of hydroxyapatite. So these two combine. So collagen molecules uh, interlace with each other and create small, small pits in which this uh, hydroxyapatite crystal sit. And that's what we call the bone matrix. So there are other proteins secreted by osteoblast, which uh, uh, helps. It's got some regulatory role like osteopointin, osteonectin, osteocalcin, and elastin. So, so bone is a constant turnover. It um, it is it gets reabsorbed and, dis and deposited. So this is a very important cycle. So consider this is a uh, pit of bone which is uh, having the liner cells which are inactive osteoblast. After some time the rankle stimulates osteoclast and it eats some part of bone and it it creates a crater which is um, filled by the osteoblast which forms bone and seal the uh, fill the crater which in turn will get uh, replaced by the uh, calcified matrix osseous matrix with the help of osteocytes which will deposit calcium and phosphate there. So what are the mechanics in the bone? I told you uh, bone growth occurs, but how does it occur? What helps the bone growth? We got certain uh, laws which help. So uh, one is Wolf's law, which says that the bone aligns depending on how it is loaded. So this can be best in the femoral head and neck. You can see this uh, bone has uh, a tensile load on the bilateral aspect and a compressive load on the um, medial aspect. So Wolf's law said that it will reorganize itself as to the load. And Newton Malkman further said that if you use the tensile load, both can get elongated. If you had compressive load, there'll be uh, it will not be so much elongated, but because of compression, there's something else happens. Bone grows up typically, which are thickened, uh, uh, thickened um, rods, which basically are condensations of osseous material, giving extra strength to withstand the compression. There's another uh, effect, which is also no knowing. So whenever there's a structure bent, into a C-shaped curve, there are changes in um, the electrical charges across. So on the convex side, this is there'll be positive charge, and on a concave side, there'll be a negative charge. So 
wherever there is negative charge, it will uh, call the osteoclast and work on it. Whereas uh, whenever there is positive charge, it will call osteoblast. Sorry, it's uh, reverse. Whenever there is a positive charge, it will um, bring the osteoclast, and whenever there is negative charge, will get osteoblast. So that's why the medial side is uh, more dense than the lateral side. There are some uh, uh, chemicals which work on the bone, important of which is vitamin D. It's a fat soluble sequosteroid from, which comes from diet or sunlight. So how does it come from diet? Diet we eat, diet which already has got active or inactive uh, um, vitamin D, which gets activated in body. But uh, what I'm going to show you is how does uh, body make vitamin D? So we have a, a dehydrocholesterol in the skin, which get converted into cholecholesterol, a pre-vitamin D, which gets uh, hydroxylized in the liver and then kidney to form, uh, to form the active vitamin D, which is also called calcitriol. So 25 hydroxy vitamin D is called calcidiol. So, and the active form is called calcitriol. And this, this is the one which is really important. The last step is regulated by parathormone, which helps and facilitate conversion of vitamin D to 25 hydroxy vitamin D to 125 hydroxy vitamin D. So, if you see the uh, vitamin D, it's uh, basically steroids. So, more, usually, steroids have receptors which are inside the nucleus. So this is a vitamin D receptor in the nucleic acid. And we have vitamin D here. It goes all across there and activates the uh, certain genes which cause synthesis of proteins like collagen and uh, um, it also synthesizes um, uh, min, min, uh, the enzymes like alkaline phosphatase which uh, helps uh, the mineralization. Further, what it does, it also causes proliferation of cells, which, uh, uh, which causes um, the meiosis to occur more often. And we got a lot, many osteoblasts, osteoclasts, which help in mineralization. So what are the actions of vitamin D? Vitamin D is basically stabilizer of calcium and phosphate. So it does cause bone mineralization, but it also causes proliferation of osteoclast and helps in resorption if required. It, in, uh, it um, absorbs calcium and phosphate from intestine and kidney. It inhibits the secretion of parathyromone. It promotes immunity, hematopoiesis, and has got some antineoplastic action. It also causes smooth muscle proliferation. So it's all healthy, healthy type of vitamin D. Uh, so, say someone to admit. So, I'll admit him first. That's fine. So, coming to next slide. The other hormone, which is like calcium, bit less, is called calcitonin. It's a 32 amino acid polypeptide is secreted by parafollicular cells in parathyroid. Basically, it works. It is where uh, osteoclast has got a receptor for caspinin which uh, makes it inactive and it blocks the uh, absorption of bone done by osteoclast. So it's an uh, osteoplastic enzyme. Third chemical is parathormone secreted by, paraf uh, paraf secreted by chief cells uh, having 84 amino acids and basically it comes as a precursor and then it is broken down to active form. Basically, uh, parathyroid causes uh, absorption of calcium from bone by osteoclast, but it also helps absorption of calcium from intestine and kidneys. However, it, uh, it, it uh, causes inhibition of phosphate in uh, absorption from the proximal uh, tubules. So it has got a phosphorus loading uh, effect. It is stimulated by reduced calcium, magnesium, and inhibited by vitamin D and increased calcium. So vitamin D, calcium, calcium are three main factors which uh, cause 
the um, which 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 maintains the bone homeostasis. So if you see the osteoclast and the osteoblast sitting with the liner cells and are not shown the osteocytes there. So when uh, the parathormone is there, actually osteoblast is the one which has got a receptor for that. So when it goes and uh, catches the receptor on osteoblast, osteoblast secretes uh, rankle which goes and sits on the receptor in the osteoclast. So when this receptor is activated, osteoclast become activated. It's ruffled vector get activated and there's a bone resorption. Alternatively, when there's a plenty of uh, calstonin, what there is secretion of osteoprotegerin, which catches the rankle and does not allow it to sit and activate the osteoclast. The rankle is a uh, got a full name, it's complicated one receptor activator of nuclear kappa ligand. So if you, even if you say rankle, it's enough. So this is how it happens. So the bone, in short, is a very dynamic structure, rich in blood supply, has got important function, has got a variation in structure, and has got a uh, living lifestyle. Thank you. Any questions? That's brilliant, so that, um, I'd like to thank you very much for this very concise uh, presentation. Uh, specific uh, and exactly at the level of the FRCS exam. And I thank you for preparing all these uh, media slides. I'm sure it's not easy. Mm -hmm. A lot of work behind uh, all of this. So thank you very much. I think uh, we've covered a lot and I think most people would want to probably watch this a uh, few times um, because, you know, basic sciences topics can be hard sometimes, but I think you've covered really uh, a lot about uh, bone metabolism there. Thank you very much to that. Appreciate that. I think um, uh, we will move on now to the um, MCQ part. Um, um, uh, I don't know if um, if Ashok is listening. Um, if you could kindly just click on the poll, or if um, Siddhar can try that, um, clicking on the poll. Uh, uh, clicking on the poll, okay. Let me do it. Or if Ashok could kindly do that. Uh, yeah. And I launch it, okay? I launched it now. I don't, I don't think, I think there is some uh, technical problem. I don't think we are able to um, share the poll now. Um, I started sharing it and 3% uh, have participated. Fine. So I think it's coming there. Great. So I would ask you all guys to answer the questions. I hope you all can see them. Uh, you, it's anonymized, so no one can identify you. you just have a go. Uh, it's very good practice. And there are specific for the exam MCQs. Uh, once you will give you one minute per question, and then uh, we will um, go through the answers. Siddharth uh, will go through the answers with you after that. So, if, um, sorry, Siddharth, I, 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 some technical problems. I can't see the polls on my side. So, how um, many answered? Uh, so, uh, you say 13 of 25 answered, 52% participated, and it's just Great. moving actually. Great. So, we'll give you, we'll give you, um, um, sometime and just to remind you guys while you're doing that just uh, after this um, MCQ part we will go through we'll have a Viva session um, so Siddharth has prepared some Viva questions and we currently have one candidate only who is uh, Mohammed uh, Javed um, if anyone else interested please let me know 
if no one else express interest, then we will just have the one candidate. But if anyone else is interested, we have a maximum of three questions for the session. Um, it's highly recommended to take part. It's good practice. I will give you feedback and we'll let you know. And it's it's a good good learning for everyone. Okay, so that's so how many, how much the percentage? Uh, so uh, we got eighteen of uh, twenty five uh, participated, which is uh, seventy two percent. Great, great. So, so seventy two percent. Um, obviously, um, I think it's trying to is moving still. So we yeah, we that's fine. We'll give you uh, maybe. Uh, we'll give you another few seconds. Uh, unfortunately, um. Obviously, people who are watching us on Ortho TV channel um, won't be able to take part in the polls, but they can always, um, you know, um, join there when the explanation is given. Right there. Great, I think let's end the poll now, uh, Siddharth, if you don't mind, and let's, uh, if you can kindly go through the questions and the answers, correct answers, and see how many. Uh, so uh, we have um, three questions. So 18 of 25 has participated, which is 72%. So first question, all 18 have answered. So the question was primary pathology of osteopetrosis lies in. So the answers were osteoblast 1, osteoclast 2, mesenchymal cells 3, collagen 4. So primary pathology in osteopetrosis is uh, deficient osteoclast, which 63% have answered. So this question is correctly answered by 63%. Okay, not bad. Yeah, that's good. Around what you expect in the exam, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, another candidate has just joined. I think he has just answered now. Uh, so second question is, physis is intra-articular in all except one. And the choices were wrist, elbow, ankle, and hip. So... 53%, which is 11 out of 20. I think one more candidate has answered uh, just now, uh, said it's a uh, wrist, which is a correct answer. Whereas uh, ankle, they said 30% uh, cases, not really correct answer. Siddharth, do you mind um, clicking on share the results of the poll so that everyone can see yeah. the results? Yeah. Click on... on on, yeah. on share, on share the results. Yeah. Whereas the third uh, question was bone mineral absorption at ruffled border occurs due to uh, cathepsin, alkaline phosphate, osteoprotegerin, or carbonic anhydrase. So 45%, which is 9 out of 20, has answered it correctly. That is carbonic anhydrase. So I'll end the poll and I'll see if I can uh, share the results. Did results come there? Did you get results, for us? Because I shared the results. Yeah, that's great. Thank you very much for that. I think uh, I'm just having on my side a little problem with the polls, so I can't see them. But um, but but uh, you've shared them. Everyone else can except me because of my technical problem on my side. But yeah, yeah we yeah. can see the results. So thank you very much for explaining them. So that's, yeah, okay. that's great. Brilliant, thank you very much. That's great, wonderful. Yeah. Lovely. Okay, guys, now um, we, if it, we're gonna stop the recording and we will move on to the next part of uh, this teaching session, uh, which is the Viva component of the exam. So, Siddharth, if you don't mind, please, uh, can you, um, get your first viva question ready yeah uh, so 
So right. first candidate we have is Mohammad Javed. Mohammad, if you could um, hi, uh, hi. speak up. Hi, Mohammad. How are you, man? Okay, great. Okay, Mohammad. So um, that's I'm lovely. Yeah. So we have five minutes as, as usual, five minutes. Um, and then we will um, we'll, we'll, we'll get on the feedback after that. So um, you can start, please. Can you see this uh, uh, side screen? Yeah, uh, yes, I can see. Yes, please. Okay. So I'll put the timer on now. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So this is a lateral radiograph. Yeah. Sorry. This is a 65 year old lady presented with back pain in the knee after fall three weeks back. Okay. So this is a lateral radiograph of the. Uh, spine i think it's a lumbar spine i cannot say by sure because i cannot see the sacrum or any ribs uh, the, uh, there is uh, arthritic changes uh, uh, with the osteoporosis and there is a, a compression fracture of a vertebral body uh, i cannot comment which uh, 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 vertebra it is but it looks like it could be 12, T12 or L1, T12. There is a slight uh, decrease height into the vertebra next to it. So what do you do? So I will take a history, uh, uh, um, uh, what uh, is she 65? Did she have any pain in the uh, in the spine before? Did she have any other fracture on like distal radius or neck of femur uh, before? And uh, what um, what she has any medical problems uh, uh, and uh, medications uh, or what does she do a profession? If she's working hobbies, and uh, then I will ask about the particular incidents. What happened at that time? How did she fall? And uh, did she have any what other? What do you think is this case? Is this the? Uh, this is a compression fracture. What is the likely cause? Looking at the uh, osteoporosis. Osteoporosis. What is the osteoporosis? So osteoporosis is the decreased bone mineral density. Uh, according to WHO, it is the. It is the. It, if it is a. If the bone mineral density is less than two point five, uh, uh, standard deviation less than the age and sorry sex and race matched uh, individual what is that score called uh, that that's called the t score t score and what is osteopenia osteopenia is that there is a decreased uh, minerals uh, uh, it is a uh, bone mineral density if it is standard it is less than uh, 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 one standard deviation Right. So, uh, what are the causes of what are the types of osteoporosis? So, osteoporosis can be uh, idiopathic, like age related, which uh, happens idiopathic. It could be due to uh, the patients taking uh, steroids uh, from the drugs related uh, disuse uh, osteoporosis. Um, it could be related to some uh, uh, metabolic disorders uh, like. Uh, 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 deficiency what of are calcium. the types of osteoporosis? Uh, okay, so this is the osteoporosis, isn't it? Yes. Okay, you got an osteoporotic fracture, okay, which you have treated with the physiotherapy and painkillers. What will do for osteoporosis? So my first line of treatment in UK, we do that. We start with the everybody will get the uh, vitamin D and calcium. And I will, uh, I will do the uh, um, uh, scan, uh, uh, DEXA scan. Uh, and I will also like to say no, uh, that whether there is any other fracture before or not. In, uh, in we, and I will apply the FRAX uh, score uh, and start uh, the patient on uh, bisphosphonates uh, uh, to uh, decrease the osteoclastic activity. Uh, uh, in uh, for the next two to three, uh, three to what three are types years. of bisphosphonates, please? So bisphosphonates, bisphosphonates can be nitrogenous based or non-nitrogenous based. Uh, and they basically uh, nitrogenous one um, uh, uh, cause the apoptosis of the uh, uh, osteoclast and non-nitrogenous cause the um, uh, uh, change the ruffle border so that they cannot active. Okay, uh, right. 
And do you know of any other uh, medicine which are used for osteoporosis? So there are other uh, are uh, like strontium uh, can be used, but it is not uh, uh, recommended now because of the uh, uh, carcinogenic effect. Uh, so we can use the uh, effects of bisphosphonates. So bisphosphonates are they can cause. Uh, uh, you, you, they have to take it. Uh, when you take it, you have to stay upright because they can cause gastritis uh, in the short term. But in the long term, they can cause because osteoclastic activity is uh, uh, stopped. So the remodeling uh, get uh, disturbed and the, it can cause the pathological fractures. That, that's fine. Your time is up. Okay, Javed. You're past this station, but uh, you, you know, you should be talking very smoothly should be like a pre-discussed uh, because the moment you say, oh, what is this? You should think and just um, squeeze your words to make it a little bit smooth. All right. Okay. And when you ask types, don't try to express either primary, secondary. It can be a senile or post monopausal isn't okay. it? Yeah. 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 Okay. And what you do, I take history. Don't really tell everything. Basically history, you say how this problem happened what is how it's bothering him, what has been done, and risk factors. Basically, you want to ask risk factor of osteoporosis and risk factors suggestive of malignancy. Okay. So, and then treatment. Okay. Um, examination treatment. So, you should always mention in UK exam at least, uh, I would use the nice guidelines for treating yeah. osteoporosis. Okay. Yeah. Well done, man. Good. Thank you. Yeah, that was good. Definitely past, uh, Muhammad. I think uh, from my point of view, I would say um, the good aspects is that there were little prompting needed. Uh, you definitely talked a lot more than the examiner, which should be the case in basic sciences questions in the exam. Um, and it's, it's particularly with basic sciences more about actually giving the examiner a little talk about the topic. It's really like that. It's very dry and it's, and you just take the examiner through it and um, say that I only had to redirect you a couple of times or move you on a couple of times, which is, that's what examiners do. Um, but that's, that was good. That was a good one. And you, your reference to the World Health Organization and, and obviously that's, um, if you put a little bit more salt on, you know, twist on that a little bit, it might. Nice guidelines and yeah, score exactly. And, uh, exactly. Yeah. It's all get you extra all these all these bits because you know the extra points, um, yeah. which you, which you which you know you will need you will need just in case you know you need extra extra points just in case um, you struggle with another question. So we're very good, very good, Mama. Lovely. So uh, we'll move on to the next candidate. Um, if you uh, can say that, please share your next question. So next ca uh, candidate is Noman Niazi. Uh, Noman, if you could speak up, please. Yeah. Hello. Hi, Hi Noman. How are you? Uh, I'm good. Thank you. You're right. So I'll, this is your picture, and I'm putting the timer on. All right. So five minutes as usual, no money is, is treated like a, you know, like you are an exam. 45 year old man, right hand dominant uh, laborer presented with pain and deformity of left arm. Uh, he's from uh, Asia and this is the x-ray. What can you see? This is the radiograph of an edema uh, of uh, right arm. Uh, I can see uh, this is uh, the humerus uh, uh, x-ray. See, there is a failure of the metal work, and there is a, a dynamic compression plate in C2, uh, which is uh, bent, and uh, there is non union of the fracture site. And there is what a non union. Uh, non union is a, a failure of the bone to uh, unite in, uh, in a, a Expected uh, time is called uh, non-union, and uh, bone shows uh, no attempt to uh, uh, to unite uh, in, uh, in the, with the passage of time. So okay, so when in a X-ray you'll say fracture is united. Uh, on X-ray, uh, uh, we uh, it depends uh, upon the 
what is the radiological definition of fracture union? Uh, if there are three out of four uh, cortices are uh, are united on X-rays, then we call it uh, radiological union. And clinically, if there is no tenderness and there is no movement at the fracture site, we call it clinical union. That's good. So Norman, looking at look at X-ray again. Tell me what is why this has gone into non-union. So there could be, uh, I will uh, divide into two factors, uh, mechanical or biological factors. So what has happened here? What do you think? Over here, uh, I think that, uh, the mechanics, uh, uh, mechanical factors are involved. If there is no infection and the patient is, uh, 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 is, has not got any um, uh, like systemic problems like diabetes, uh, immunocompromise. Oh, all right. So what can be the causes of non-union? So non-union uh, is divided into local causes and systemic causes. Local causes are if there is a gap at the fracture site, uh, if there is infection, uh, if there is inclusion of the surfaces between the fracture site, and uh, uh, and if the, uh, and uh, if it's open fracture and uh, and systemic factors are if the patient is immuno immunocompromised, diabetic. And blood supply is compromised over the uh, over the fracture, and there is two. Uh, if the mechanics are uh, are not be one single systemic fracture, which you can change as a doctor and patient, which has impact on union of fracture. A systemic factor is uh, a systemic, like uh, if we lifestyle fracture. Smoking is a yeah. most important factor. That's fine. So this is gone into biological failure. It, no, they cannot see any uh, this thing, isn't it? So yeah. uh, what are the types of non-Indian? Uh, I will uh, broadly divide into uh, 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 like uh, uh, non-Indian into... Uh, Hypertrophic non-union or atrophic non-union. Hypertrophic non-union is when there is uh, enough blood supply, but the and there's too much movement at the fracture site. And atrophic non-union is when there is uh, blood supply is compromised, uh, but the mechanics are all right. What is oligotropic then? Oligotrophic is when uh, the blood supply is okay, and but there is a gap at the fracture site, or there's minimal. Uh, more than normal movements at the fracture site and leads to uh, atrop uh, sorry uh, oligotropic non-union. Right. So what you'll do for this patient? What procedure you'll do? Principal First of all, I will rule out infection uh, by doing the blood test, um, CRP, SR, white cell count. And I will see the um, uh, patient as a whole, uh, metabolic, uh, like uh, if he's having uh, anemia, if he's a smoker, uh, Diabetes under control. And locally, I will. Uh, I will. Um, uh, my plan is to do the uh, review of the procedure and, uh, and, uh, and giving the um, mechanical stability uh, with uh, uh, autograft uh, application as well. So I will revise the implant hmm. uh, after ruling out infection. Anything else? Bone grafting. Uh, I will do the autologous uh, bone graft. All right, that's fine. Your time is up, okay? You would have just missed six, okay? You just were touching six. I mean, yeah, you are quite all right again, but treatment, principle of treatment, no? You say, you, I'll rule out infection, I will achieve biomechanical stability, okay? And I'll uh, do bone grafting, okay? Um, that's fine. Uh, Firas, what you have to say something, please? You, you're muted, I think. Yeah, you're... I think I think uh, it's it's a typical exam question. Thank you, Sadat, for bringing this up. Um, obviously, when you face with non-union, it's when it is a predictable, relatively easy question, and so the stakes would be very high here. Yeah. The examiner would expect you to know all the principles and, and, and go through all this question and, and all the um, possibilities and definitions uh, very, well, very well, yeah? So that's the difficult thing when you get in a, in a relatively 
easy questions, a straightforward question is you have to 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 know it in and out. Um, but I think uh, I think generally you 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 sort of um, you moved on in the question. You were listening to the hints from the examiner, and 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 you're trying to correct yourself and move on. So I think there's all, all the right right techniques for the exams, and that's what it is all all about. Um, a little bit more, you know, being to the point a little bit more, and, and just getting on to the answering the question as quickly as possible. And and you know where this is going, yeah. So yeah. you know you 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 might just want to get to the surgical options and stuff as soon as possible within your answer. So, um, um, right. but but yeah, you've got to remember. Obviously, it depends on where you get this qu question asked. Um, if you get asked in trauma situation in a trauma station, it's different from when you get asked in a basic senses station. Okay. Um, which I think you you've got it definitely here, but I'm just saying it for for benefit of everyone else. That's uh, you could get this case in a trauma, and that's in a trauma you will be more discussing the surgical options and all of that. You get in basic sciences, you'll be more discussing bone metabolism uh, and types of union and stuff like this. So you be you know aware of that and uh, please for the exams. It's all about the techniques. So, so thank you very much, Norman. Yeah, thank you. Factors. Generally, if you write down advanced age, diabetes, immunodeficiency, inflammatory diseases, okay, radiation, and um, uh, steroids, these are common generalist factors for most of the things. Okay, then local, you say whether it's a compound or not, whether it is compartment syndrome or not, whether there's a there was a combination or gap or not, whether it's infection or not. And you forgot about telling the, your technique factors, whether it is well reduced, well fixed, all right, use a, a vascular technique. So the three three things you have to tell. Okay. You'll you'll do well. Okay. Great. Thank uh, you. Norman. Well done, Norman. So if, um, we have one more candidate, um, Ajay. Um, and we have one of our faculty, Mustafa, has prepared the question. Uh, Mustafa, are you able to share your screen now? If you unmute yourself. Yes. That's great. Thank you very much. So Ajay, uh, we, we still can't, Mustafa, we still can't see your screen. It's um, fully blank at the moment. Um, okay. If you could try again, please. Try to share again, please, um, Mustafa, if able to. Yeah? I shared. That's it. That's it. Now we can see. So, Ajay, if you could unmute yourself, please. Yeah, done it. Um, yeah, so um, I know we are doing uh, basic sciences today, uh, but uh, Mustafa, is this going to be a basic sciences question or is it pediatric? It will be a um, pediatric one. Pediatric, because it's important for the candidate. And this one, one of the you most know, common exam scenario. Brilliant. It's a very good case, but it's very important for the candidate to sit their um, sort of mentality on what station they are sitting on, because the way they answer the question completely different. So, so Ajay, you are now doing pediatric yeah. uh, station. Um, okay, Mustafa, so we'll start the time now. Okay, uh, can you tell me what you are seeing in the photo? Yeah, this is the clinical picture uh, forearm of a child showing that there is a uh, wrist de uh, radially deviated wrist and prominent ulna and seems to be short arm and a rudimentary thumb. My diagnosis from this uh, limited information looks like the radial hypoplasia, which is uh, uh, the Asper Swanson's classification is the filler of formation and it happens because of the defect in the sonic hedgehog gene. Excellent. So uh, can you tell me what you will do for the patient? So I would like to uh, take the history and examine. In history, I would like to know whether it's a, it's isolated or it's a syndromic. I'd like to rule out the, some of these syndromes which may be more serious, like, like a what? TAR, which is thrombocytopenia and absent radius, and VETAR, which is uh, vertebral anomalies absent radius and uh, another is vectoral Fanconi's anemia and Holt-Ornus syndrome. So I'd like to uh, uh, get his blood 
test full blood count uh, usa is smear like to get his kidney scan done also uh, involved the other team pediatrician and gastro uh, uh, surgeon to look for any other anomaly and look for his spine as well whether that is also affected or not and uh, depending upon that uh, the treatment it's uh, uh, forwarded uh, then then i'll focus the examination of these arm and elbow so what you are searching for the elbow exam so in elbow i would like to see whether he has got a elbow movement or not is biceps functioning or not and uh, check the movement of the wrist and the rest of the finger i can see from the picture the thumb is rudimentary so it looks like it's quite hypoplastic it may not be reconstructible so this is the x ray what you can see so Which this is the, this seems to be a uh, complete absence of the radius uh, which is uh, the uh, forgot the name of the classification is the type 3 uh, uh, type 4 sorry yeah uh, and so uh, yes, what you will inform is the family so i'll inform the family um, after make sure that it's not any other syndrome that uh, this is the uh, uh, i would like to know the function of the elbow as well whether he's got elbow uh, elbow function is good good function so uh, uh, i would like to in, uh, inform the family that this is the uh, absent of the one of the bone which is causing the bowing of this and also the deviation he should have an a surgical uh, treatment which will involve the uh, centralization of the uh, wrist and also along with that he will need a, a polishization of the index finger to make the uh, function improve the function of the hand that will be done as soon as possible ideally should be done in a one and a half year to two years of the age so that the function can be achieved so i will okay. inform them yes please yeah the family are worried because they have another son sorry say the family are worried because they have another this another uh, yes another pregnancy what you will inform them so this this says i will inform them this is not a, a genetic uh, uh, uh inheritance so it should not affect it. however they should have a uh, uh serial scanning of the uh, the child from the uh, birth screening which starts from the 6 uh, uh, weeks 12 weeks and 18 weeks make sure that the, he does not develop any congenital deformity but this is not genetic inheritance good still we have time yeah one more minute I think he covers all the all the subject. Uh, he uh, he informed me about sonic hedgehog gene, and he told me about uh, the classification. Um, he told me about the management. We reached the management very easy. Uh, he told me about the centralization and debilitization of the index finger, uh, uh, some rudimentary thumb, uh, some hypoplasia. So this patient, uh, you will do amputation for the thumb, uh, and later on you will do debilitization. Uh, the affected uh, uh, syndromes with the patients like cold or uh, syndrome, uh, TAR syndrome, bacterial, and uh, and uh, and also TAR, uh, as you mentioned. Um, you will do for the patient the complete CBC and the ultrasound for the kidney and the cardiac examination. Um, you you should mention for me that this may be bilateral for the patient. You should examine the other side. Yeah. You informed yeah. me about the examination of the elbow and the most important is the biceps. Because if the patient has no biceps function, what you will do for the patient? So if there is not any elbow flexion, then uh, we will leave as it is because he uh, that he can utilize his bent wrist for the reaching to mouth or uh, the yes, function. Yes, yes. If he can, if he doesn't have any elbow movement, you you assure the patient and the family that this position is will helping him to reach his mouth for eating and something like this. Excellent, clear boss. If I am examiner, I will give you seven at least. Thank you. So, uh, uh, Ajay, when you say principles, you talk uh, something like this. I, if elbow function is all right, I'll aim at centralization of the you know, forearm, centralization of him, and reconstruction of thumb. So that explains in very short sentence what you want to say. Yeah. And, and the second question he asked you, what will tell um, uh, patient? Because it might be just isolated or it can be associated. So you'll say I will take your opinion from genetic people. Genetic, yeah, involvement, yeah. To answer that question because you don't know whether, to, yeah, that's the only thing. Yeah, thank you. Secondly, when you answer, when you say 
don't mention the features and then mention the what it is first mention this what it is and then mention the features if it's unlikely you'll be wrong but if you are wrong then examiner will uh, tell you and prompt you okay you say this is a radial club hand because this these features are there all right thank because you because it's obvious isn't it most of things yeah. are that obvious all right okay thank Done you well man yeah brilliant i think ajay that you did really well and uh, it's very difficult question i mean it's a common case common exam case and and obviously not everyone is expected to know as much as you did about about the condition and i think generally when you for any people watching if you were faced with a clinical picture that's a little bit difficult just start describing what you see things will come to you and stick to the principles always something like this deformity a very unusual always say buzzwords like counseling the family yeah, yeah. what you said uh, so but for candidates who might you know struggle with some, something like this family counseling yeah look if it's syndromic yeah if they just you know, just hear you saying syn it's syndromic so they know you're going to be looking for other congenital anomalies in the in the child yeah and you're not going to be missing anything else important, heart conditions or cardiac condition, anything. So, so these say these buzzwords, family counseling, um, look at it's, it's syndromic and look for any other congenital deformities. MDT approach, so you'll be discussing with genetists, we are discussing with pediatrician, they're all being on board, you're not being just on your own dealing with this patient. And you probably will pass just by saying these things. Um, but then obviously score higher by, by, by knowing all the ins and outs of the deformity and how to correct it and how to treat it. So well done, Ajay, I think. But um, that's really my advice to everyone. Uh, you've done well, Ajay. You yeah. have just tell, just think about using the, I mean, arranging your uh, topics and subtopics. Yeah. yeah. Thank that's you. great. So. Um, Thank you, Siddharth. Thank you, Mustafa, for this uh, question. Uh, very useful. And I think um, we will have this clinical photos. Uh, you kindly send them to me earlier. So we're going to have them in the next edition of the Concise Orthopedic Notes book. So um, uh, thank you, guys. Um, today, as we had a 42 uh, participants in total, so, and I would like to thank everyone for attending today. Um, I'd like to thank most of all um, Siddharth uh, Kamat for this um, wonderful teaching session. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Mustafa Ajendi or other faculty joining us uh, from Middle East. Um, very uh, proud for, for you know to have you on board with us. Um, and just a reminder as well. Um, I will just share my screen again. And just to remind you, we have one place, one last place left on our case-based discussion course for FRCS on the 30th of October. Um, and we have places in our basic sciences course. Uh, details are on um, orthopedicacademy.co.uk website. And there also on the website, you'll find details of our up other upcoming webinars. Um, and uh, with and that's all for tonight. So uh, thank you very much, everyone, for joining. Um, and we wish to see you again, obviously, in our future webinars and courses. And and, and we would love to hear back from you. Uh, communicate with us um, on on Twitter and Telegram, and just send us any comments, please. So, and thank you very much. Good thank night. Uh, everyone can leave. Thank you very much. Have a nice night. Thank you. If faculty can stay behind, please just for a couple of minutes. I think there's a, a Jay Hari, he's asking how can he get the book? Uh, book J is on Amazon. It uh, depends on where you are. I'm not sure what country. You can speak up if you want to, um, Jay, uh, but it is on Amazon, also on Google Books. Hi there, thank you very much. No, I'm in South Africa. 
So um, I can yeah. order it. So I think Amazon is probably the best way to get it down the side. Yeah, yeah. All right. No, thank you very much. It was a no really, really great discussion after the talk. Yeah. All right, Jay. Well, thank you very much. It'll be good. Good to have you from South Africa. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and and uh, you know, if you could spread the word. Um, as well, that would be appreciated. So, um, do you do FRCS in South Africa? Is it or no? No, we don't. I was first exposed to the whole FRCS thing. I, I worked in Ireland for about a year, ah, okay. and in that time, yeah, in that time, I was exposed to the whole UK-based system of training. But yeah. I'm now I'm now doing my uh, S, uh, what was it, SPR time now in South Africa. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and you plan to do FRCS? Is it or yes, yes, I plan on doing it. I want to finish my SPR time here in South Africa first, and then do my uh, FRCS after that. Lovely. And uh, yeah, I mean, if you can spread the word, if you, you your friends um, are interested, your colleagues are interested in 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 watching or joining anything, um, we no, have. Definitely. Uh, I'll do that. I'll definitely do that. Um, the, the training topics are very, very yeah. good. And I really love the interaction in the talks, especially after the discussion, the teaching session. Yeah. The interactive session is really good. I find that very, very helpful. Yeah, we try to run this um, as, as often as we can. And, yeah. um, but uh, we, what happens is we, we often have um, one person joining from a country and then uh, they start recommending this uh, and... Uh, so you know you could uh, you could be our ambassador in South Africa. <laughs> sure, sure, no problem. I'll do that. I'll spread the word. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Okay, Jay. Have a good. Keep going. Bye bye. Bye. Great. So uh, Mustafa left, I think, isn't it? Um, just um, just one moment. Um, take just. Um, Reporters. That's fine. So, uh, thank you, Suda. That was very yeah. good. It was really good. Um, uh, don't admit anyone, uh, Suda. Okay. No. Anymore. <laughs> That's fine. So I just remove candies. That's good. So it was very good, very good. It uh, was a really good session, I thought. Uh, um, very, very relevant. You managed uh, to do it in, in just 30, 35 minutes, I think. Yeah. Which is good considering the, you know, it's a huge topic. This was really good. Um, the media style you used was very good as well. This just added a little bit of twist to it. So it's very good. So I think uh, we had the 42, which I think is, is good. I think recently there's been a bit of problems with the attendance because yeah. there's so many webinars going on. Um, yeah. So I think, but uh, we're picking up very well, I think. So that's good. Ashok, happy with things? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wait.